Hello everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay, Nur, Chuck. And this, my friends, is The Thunder Show. Oh, The Thunder Show. Yes, that program that brings straight thunder while tasting vino and eating a little cheese. And the reason we have Parmesan cheese here today is one, because I'm slightly hungry, but two, because we have a great varietal. I like all the toothpicks you had, Mott. Have you ever had toothpick pencil wars? That's some serious stuff. I gotta show you later. Anyway. Parmesan. Barbera di Asti, Barbera di Alba. The Barbera grape, the most widely planted grape in Italy, or second, there's like this big debate. Anyway, way up there, obviously. Really an interesting wine that I think is underrated, underdrank, and totally overlooked for value. And I wanna present it to the Vayner Nation right now and taste these three wines. Now, what you're gonna notice is two of them say Barbera di Asti, from the Asti region, and one of them comes from Barbera di Abba. These are two of the three bigger regions where Barbera comes from. Now, in the Piedmont region is where this, is, uh, where this grape really does its damage. Now, what you I have to understand about the Alba region is that, and you'll notice that it's $16, whereas Diasti, you'll notice, are 11 12 $13. So it's always a little more expensive, and that's because the Nebbiolo grape is much more profitable in Alba. So you don't see a lot of Barbera di Alba, and less and less and less. It's just not a financially smart move for most of the producers, and a lot of them are now planting Nebbiolo instead of Barbera. So it's kind of disappearing, not all the way, but definitely something to look out for. You get a little bit of a different sense of terroir between Asti and between Alba, and I just think that's an interesting kind of point. Now, the three wines we have today are pretty widely available. Definitely the first two are some of the more widely available Barberas. One of the big shifts I wanna go with Wine Library TV is start showing wines that are a little bit more available, um, even in a grocery store setting. So any store that's carrying you know, Barbera, I would hope that one of these two are represented. Um, Pio Cesare is another producer that we could have probably brought on, um, but it's a focus of mine for sure. Now, there is a thing in this bucket, in this little uh, pumpkin bucket. First person to guess in the comments what's inside of there gets a signed copy of the book. Ma, that's gonna be a lot of fun. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to uh, keep an eye on that because I think I'm on vacation while this contest runs. Did you see what I put in there? Okay, so I'm just gonna put that over here and we'll get the signed copy when I get back. Anyway, let's get into the vinos because that's how we roll a cardi. 2000 and something. Where's the five? Tabarine, uh, Vin Barbera di Asti. 11 US dollars, 13.5% alcohol content. Now, most of the Barbera in Italy is, is aged in big Slovenian oak, but we've been seeing a bigger trend lately to going to small French barrique. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Let's see what's going on here. Nice little color, not too bad, not too shabby. Definitely could see your fingers through it. Now, this nose is really coming through already. I can smell it without even like getting in there. There's a lot of cherry filling up the general area. So right off the top, an unusual move, a nice counter by this little wine. Um, I'm excited to see what's going on here. Oh yeah, this is aromatically explosive. I mean, dark, dark chocolate. I get a little hint of paprika coming through on the nose as well. And obvious, obvious sour cherries, a lot of it. Almost like a, a little bit of a hmm, dark cherry, uh, uh, black cherry soda kind of component. But very aromatic, very good job by this little $11 wine. Right off the top, I can tell you this. As I'm tasting this wine, wow. This has a nice grip. It really does. It's got nice firm tannins, and it's got really explosive, rich, and powerful length. Um, very, very, very heavy on the um, young blackberry flavor. 
So there's still a hint of greenness and a little sourness. You know, it's not plumpy yet. Um, it's like a youthful, like on its way up. Like if you let it sit in a bush a little longer, it would grow and get more sweet. But you just can't wait. You don't have patience, do you? And that's why you grab it and you bite it. And that's what this tastes like. I also get a little bit of a dark coffee bean aspect, like biting a coffee bean. So not the elegance of coffee, but that bitterness, the tannins of a bean. Um, very interesting though. I'm very taken aback by the quality of this wine. And it reminds me why I myself will always go for a Barbera before I go for a Chianti. Not hating on Sangiovese, just saying. I think you get more value, time in and time out, from Barbera than you do from a lot of Chiantis. Because Chianti is a bigger play in the US, you get a lot more business maneuvering within Chianti, and you get a lot of people making Chianti Classicos that are just made because they sell because the branding of Chianti Classicos. So, this Barbera di Asti is very solid, very strong, very well made. And just very good. Um, the bitterness of the tannins on the back end could throw some people off, but I think this is an exceptional start to the show. I'm going to go 89 points in this wine. Really up my alley, but I have to preface it. Little star, little you know, 61 star, little Barry Bonds asterisk, little Roger Clemens asterisk that you've gotta be a little careful because on the back end, the bitterness could throw you off. So if you know your Fruit City USA, don't go rolling into the ghetto of the darkness and the bitterness and the vegetal. But if you're looking for something different, looking to expand your palate, an excellent entry level Barbera to mix it up. I mean, talk about a wine that I would love with good old fashioned pizza right now. Perfection. Let's move on. Really excited about the Segacio 2006 Barbera di Alba. This wine rolls in at 16 US dollars, 91 point Stephen Tanzer, which is a huge score from a very difficult uh, critic. This wine uh, I've had in prior vintages, so I've been very excited by some of the efforts. Um, let's see what's going on here. Now, a totally different situation in color. A much deeper, darker, richer, blacker, more mean, purple, grape ape color. A much more serious color, um, per se. Get a little piece of Parmesan. Delicious. Much tighter nose. No comparison to the last wine. Has absolutely nowhere close to the amount of aromatics that the last wine had. I get a little, you know, pastry kind of thing, like a cream puff kind of thing going on. It's a, it's a creamy component on the nose. God, this is tight as a rock. I mean, really struggling to even give out anything. Let's give it a whirl. Much bolder, a heavy dose of vanilla coming through. And this is where you get into the French barrique um, aspects. I could be wrong, I'm not sure if it's in, but I'd be surprised if it wasn't in French oak. Sometimes I talk about what I would imagine purple paint tasting like. I haven't brought that up in a long time, uh, but this is where I'd go with this. This has got a very interesting blend of the old world and the new world. The texture, the body, and the richness of this wine is far superior to the last wine. It's got classic Italian flavors. It's got nice kind of like bell pepper thing going on in the mid palate. Even like a hint of like mojito on the end. A little minty mint for all you fans out there on the end. But it's subtle and it's integrated. Um, it's a dark wine again. Again, a dark chocolate play over milk chocolate. Big ups to whatchamacallit, my favorite candy bar. That's milk chocolate, the dark chocolate. Come on, remember when in Halloween you get like dark chocolate Hershey's and you're like, ah, oh, no, yeah, the mint chocolate was so, anyway. But it's healthy for you now. They're saying eat the dark chocolate, just like the vino. Um, so, definitely a dark, dark chocolate play on the palate. This wine also has a little bit more of a rose petal play. A little more floral than the last one. It's very creamy and cedary on the finish. Um, I don't know. To me, this is like caught half, you know. You know when you don't commit to anything and you're half here and you're half there? It does both things well, the old and the new, but neither exceptional. It's like one of those, you know, you know what it is, my? It's like one of those guys that is like good enough to be a college basketball player and a college baseball player, right? But doesn't make the pros in either. 
That's what this is. This is no Dave Winfield, who could have made the pros in three sports, by the way. Did you know that, Ma? Mm-hmm. Drafted by three teams. Crazy. The Padres, the Vikings, and the San Diego Clippers. Three sports, Dave Winfield. Big ups to Dave Winfield. That's some scary athletic ability. Anyway, this is no Dave Winfield. This is falling short in both categories, in my opinion. In the old world flavoring and in the new world body. And so, to me, it's like 80% in each. And so, it's a solid wine. I'm going to go 85 points on it. It doesn't hate me. I don't hate it. But I think Stephen Tanzer overscored it. I've got to give it a pass. I mean, I've never been this far under Tanzer, so we're totally seeing this wine different. Um, And that's where we're at. Let's move on. And finally, this is the La Aurora Barbera di Asti 2004 from Casina Rorera. Uh, 16 U.S. bones. And uh, let's see what's going on here. Very classic package. Makes me think of the old world. What's going on with you, Mott? Doing well? Did you want some Parmesan? Um, Take a little piece. I know you want some. Thank you. You got it. Fourteen percent alcohol. Now this is really old world in its nose. I get a little bit of like a cellar door kind of thing going on, a little cobweb action. Little hints of like I wanna go with red pepper here, maybe even yellow. A little funkiness, you know, a little like tennis sneaker thing going on. Let's give it a whirl. This is an earthy play. Ooh, high acidity too um, on this wine. But it's fresh and vibrant. Ooh, this is a little bit of a controversial wine. If you're really into old world, the real, you know, the Barbera that your grandfather drank, you're gonna wanna try this. 16 bones for nasty, you know, premium price point. Um, I get a little red radish, I get a little plum. Very green, very green on the finish. I mean like lettuce leaves, uh, cabbage, you know, uh, celery stick, a very green play. I don't know, it's not really doing much for me in a category that I normally really like. I like the earthy tones, I like the you know vegetal components, but there's just something about this wine that is not doing it for me. Parmesan's the best thing going. Yeah, I'm not feeling this wine. I'm gonna go 84 points on this wine. I just think it lacks any kind of skill. Um, it, it, it's just a dull wine. And um, all in all, does not bring the thunder in any shape or form. Not even a little bit of a drizzle, in my opinion, Mott. Let's give this wine a pass as well. And so, classic vino, where price has no impact, for me, the Icardi is by far the wine of the tasting. Let me just get back to it. Let me see, maybe I was just in the mood. No, this just hits my palate right. Good stuff. Interesting. Very intriguing wines, very made for Italian food. If you're going with Parmesan, excuse me, if you're going with, um, what am I looking for? Eggplant, um, if you're going for you know pizza, if you're going for veal, you know, just like all these classic Italian fares, you know, mussels with sauce. I mean, just this is a wine that really matches up perfectly with Parmesan, with other cheeses, with tomato sauce. I just think if you want to roll classic, little little Italy in your living room, this is a wine you've got to put part of your rotation. And I know a lot of you have not tried a Barbera yet. Please do. Find it. Try it. That's what it's all about with the vino. And do it with family. That makes it perfect. Question of the day. A little curiosity. Favorite all-time television show. Nice. Because you, with a little bit of me, We're changing the wine.